everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time news video. Today I have some absolutely incredible exclusive leaks for you guys. Like this stuff is hot off the presses. I have a major source within the production and they've given me this information. It's pretty exclusive stuff. There are leaks about set design, some ideas on the plot, props, and even some casting audition tapes. Like there is literally so much here that it might make you think that I'm just making all this up, but I mean, that would be crazy, right? Now before moving forward though, let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the final book of the series, A Memory of Light. If you have not finished all of the books of the Wheel of Time series, watch this video at your own risk. You have been warned. So folks, there is so much to get to, I wanna jump right in. Let's start with some news that broke a couple weeks back, and that is David Buckley, the man that was hired to score the Wheel of Time, has left the project. Now, no reason was given for his departure, but one of the main things on everyone's mind is who would replace him in the role. There was speculation that figures like John Williams, Hans Zimmer, and even Danny Elfman would get the role, but it turns out the production has settled on American composer Jolie Dunn. Now, if you haven't heard of Jolie Dunn, I'm not surprised. She has a small but very distinguished career, and I think, frankly, from what I was able to find of her work, she's going to do really, really well. Now, she rose to fame last year with a breakout hit, and it looks like Amazon may be looking to capitalize on that stardom by bringing her in as the new composer. Now, let me go ahead and play a clip of her work so you guys can get a feel of what we're looking at here for the show. I wonder what's inside your book hole. I wonder what's inside your book hole. Now, as you can see from the clip, she's honestly going to be a good fit. It turns out that she's a massive Wheel of Time fan, having read the books more than 30 times. When interviewed, Dunn said that the lyrics to her breakout song were actually inspired by the boar and the metaphysical questions that the Dark One's presence brings up, like that hole in existence. Um, some of the questions that Robert Jordan actually explored with the Wheel of Time series. So I think that that leads into a little bit about why she might have gotten the role. And I think she'll do really well because typically good art is inspired from within and I feel like she's got it nailed for the Wheel of Time. Now currently Jolie Dunn is living in Los Angeles with her mother, but her mother says that as soon as she has finished potty training, she will make the trip to Prague and will start working to score the Wheel of Time. The only bad news here, and I know this will upset some folks, is there is going to be a slight delay in production. Her potty training is not scheduled to be finished until late summer of 2021, and so the score may not get finished until late 2021. That might mean we get a 2022 release. Who knows? Maybe she will learn quicker. Now, one of the next major pieces of news is a bit of insight into one of the more mysterious leaked roles from the show. Now, early on in production, the character of Layla Abara was discovered, but we never got much more than that. There was a ton of speculation about whether or not she would be Perrin's wife, whether Perrin would kill her in the opening. Again, there was no real definitive answers. I think we finally have the answer to this question. Now, according to my source on the show named Q, Layla Abara will be playing the role of a pizzeria operator in Emmons Field. Now, this is the first I've heard of pizza in the Wheel of Time, but I suppose that it makes sense that pizza would survive in some form in this age of the wheel. Now, according to Q, both the village council and the women's circle apparently meet in secret in the basement of that pizza place. Now, what they do there is still a mystery. Q told me that I didn't want to know. I know this may be shocking to a lot of you guys as a major departure from the books, but Q has never let me down with anything he's told me before, and I met Q on the internet, and so the information is pretty well vetted. So I actually trust this leak. Again, it may not be what we want to hear, but I think it's probably the truth. In other news, we got some confirmation about some of the sets that would be used in the show, as well as some of the locations that are going to make it into Season 1. Now, according to my sources, Tar Valen will actually make an appearance in Season 1, which I think many of us assumed. Now, we know this because the Czech casting agency named Falinsa Jako Kurva has posted an open casting for what they are calling the Tar Valen Harbor Master. Now, this is an open casting, so if you're looking for your chance to be in the show, this might be your opportunity. The only requirements are an up-to-date CV, and a documented ability to find North Harbor at least 50% of the time. Now, while that may be an odd request, they were adamant about it in their posting. They will require written statements from at least five to six female friends 
attesting at the applicant's ability to find North Harbor. Apparently, they've been looking for a while, and most of the applicants they've gotten have only been able to point in the general area of North Harbor, but they've not been able to find it. Maybe you have what it takes, so definitely put in your application. Our next piece of news is another location that was rumored to be a part of the show, but it looks like now we have confirmation. We know they've started writing season two, and it's possible they're in the early stages of planning for the later seasons, as some of the leaked plans that have come out are that of the Black Tower. According to the leak, the growth of the Black Tower as a structure will come in stages, just as in the book. So I'm gonna throw this up on the screen so you guys can see here, there's a couple different leaked photos. At first, it starts as a small farm on the outskirts of Camelin, and over time, as the discovery of traveling stimulates the growth of the tower, it will grow larger and larger, and will eventually become a counter to the White Tower, as Robert Jordan intended. The goal would be that by the end of the series, the Black Tower would be a clear counter to Vagina Island, I mean Tarvalin. I am excited to see this take place on screen. The next major leak comes in the form of a few prop releases from Wadon Prime. If you weren't aware in the past few months, Amazon has given us two major props from the books in a short clip. Now I've managed to get my hands on two more of the upcoming prop releases, and I think you guys are gonna love this stuff. The attention to detail is incredible, just like the other ones. What I wanna do is play the first clip here, and then we'll talk about it a little bit and discuss what it might mean for the show going forward. <laughs> Now, well, my first reaction to that was that the quality of the editing has dropped a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to give that out there. Uh, it seems like Wadon Prime is putting a little less and less effort into these, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this because it's leaked. It wasn't finished, so they may still have some work to do. But in terms of what we're looking at, this is apparently the Horn of Valir. Now, I will admit it isn't what my headcanon told me, but I can certainly get behind this as a fresh and modern take on the horn. Now, I can really picture this in Barney's hands as Matt, and even though it's not how I envisioned it, I think it can work. Now let's take a look at the second clip, because honestly, this one was a surprise to me. I was not expecting to see this particular prop this early in production, and even though this is a bit of a deep cut, I can actually see the reasoning to a degree, so I'll explain that after. Let me go ahead and just play the clip, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> Now, if you were surprised, you are not the only one. I mean, who expected that we would see the Red Rod Terangrial this early in the series? Now, as to the design, it's certainly sleek, and I think it comes across very modern and battery powered. I think you get the feeling from looking at it that it might bring the ecstasy that you would expect from using the one power. Now, I do have some speculation as to why we're seeing the Red Rod this early in production, and it may not make some of you very happy. Remember that Amazon is in this to make money and product placement and merchandise sales are gonna be important to franchises like this. I think they are capitalizing on the merchandising options and being able to sell Red Rod Terangrials of their own. Now, coincidentally, we have a Red Rod Terangrial for sale at shopwheelofTime.com that looks very similar to this particular rod. Feel free to check that out and purchase it if you wish. It just supports the channel. There have been a couple other product placement announcements that are gonna be a part of the show. We don't have footage of this yet, but it looks like Amazon has partnered with MyPillow. MyPillow will be featured heavily within the Wheel of Time series on Amazon, so look forward to that. And they have struck a deal with Mike Lindell, the head of MyPillow. He will be starring in the show, so look forward to that, guys. We're all really excited. Our last piece of news is a number of leaked audition tapes for various roles within the show. Now these apparently come from months ago. And as with all the other leaked audition tapes that we've seen, the dialogue may or may not make it into the show, but it does give us some insight into what they're thinking with each of these roles. Now what I'm gonna do is play all of the clips in a row, and instead of breaking them down one at a time, we'll just talk about them all when they're all done. So here we go. Hi, I'm Lesby Nerdy, here to read for the part of Balzamon, Heart of the Dark. Are you the one? You cannot hide it from me forever. You cannot even hide yourself from me. Not on the highest mountain, nor in the deepest cave. I know you down to the smallest hair. Are you expecting glory? <laughs> Power? Did the toe of the eye of the world would serve you? <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hello, I go by the name The Badger Reborn, and I am auditioning for The Wheel of Time, 
for the role of Bail Doman. My name be Bail Doman, captain and owner of the spray. Please, sir, we are just simple women and not looking for trouble. My name is Aguini, and this is Nineveh. We're hoping for passage on your ship. Simple women, eh? Fortune pricked me, but you do know have the look. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling me in for Fayil. I live for Fayil. Fayil is my girl. Why did I dress as Moraine? Kind of my thing. Mm, I don't think it's confusing, no. I could weave a quick mirror of mist to give you a little file realness. Yeah, give me just one sec. Okay, so I did go through the sides. I just think it would be better if I did like a little improv and showed you my best file. Is that okay? I'm just gonna do it. <sighs> okay. <sighs> F you, Perrin. You're a piece of sh I'm sorry, that came across like really harsh. I can, I can do that better. I can try that again. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. <sighs> oh, okay. F you, parent. You're a piece of sh Oh, the nose is too much. My Moiraine look was confusing and now the nose is too much. Okay, when you say leave, do you mean like leave, leave? Because I'm not done yet. I have like a couple other things. I can do the Cesara. This is canon and I am cool with nudity. So, okay, one more thing. One more little thing. My warder would like to submit herself for Dapple. She's new on the scene, but she has serious acting chops. Okay, burn me. I'm leaving. I don't want to be in your little wheel of time show anyway. So honestly, most of those were pretty awful. The one I did enjoy was Badger Reborn auditioning for Bail Doman. He really fits my headcanon for Bail Doman. I was absolutely shocked, actually, that Rakappa said I did not get the part of Fail. That nose really nailed it, in my opinion. I think it's a travesty. The last thing that I want to say, guys, uh, before we finish out here, I wanted to let you know, uh, just clue you in a little bit. I wanted to respond a little bit to something I see in the comments all the time about Rafe and the gay agenda that Rafe is pushing. Um, I want to let you know that both myself, Lesby Nerdy, um, Rakapa Sadai, we were actually at the Gay Agenda Conference that we host every year where we kind of set the gay agenda for the year. Um, and I wanted to let you know we were able to speak with Rafe while we were there. And one of the things that he told us is that his goal uh, is to very subtly turn all of the youth gay with the show. And I know that... Um, that's something a lot of you have left comments about that you thought that he might be doing and you were hoping that that was true. And I wanted to let you know that we did confirm that, that the goal of the show is to make everybody gay. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Anyways, thank you for checking out the fake news. I am fairly certain that someone will believe all of the garbage that I just said and is going to post something about how all of these changes are stupid. And if that's you, you deserve the public shame that you're about to get in the comment section. Otherwise, thanks for watching and let me know what you think of all of my fake leaks in the comments of the video. Special thanks to Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern for help with the graphics. We'll talk with Rakapa Sadai, Badger Reborn, Malkier Talks, and Lesby Nerdy for their contribution and their incredible audition tapes. I will have all of their channels linked in the description of this video. Make sure to check them out. Also, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content like actual content this time around. We should be getting more actual news this coming week. And I also have a few more editions of the reread series coming out this week as well. If you have not checked out those videos yet, make sure to do that. Basically what I'm doing is rereading Eye of the World, but doing it from a reread standpoint, we're looking at all the spoilers and the foreshadowing and all the stuff that's built in there. And then we're doing it with visuals so you can kind of picture what's happening with maps. It's pretty cool. It's a fun little series. Make sure to check those out. And then all of those videos have a corresponding article on thegreatbite.com. So that's a lot of fun. Please consider supporting the channel on Patreon if you like what we do here. It's the best way to support what we are doing to build the, our little Wheel of Time community. And every little bit goes a long way to helping grow. And it helps us prepare for the masses of people that are going to come when the show does come out. You can find that link in the description of the video. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?